Hey, what it do, y'all? It's your boy E2 Blue coming back at you again. And um, it's a Pro Bowl weekend. Uh, you know, we got a couple of guys in there. Of course, our usual guys, Travis Frederick, um, Tyron Smith. Um, Zach Martin was named to the Pro Bowl, but of course, he's not going to play in it. Uh, he backed out of it because he had knee surgery. So um, he's going to be, you know, healing from that for, for the remainder of the offseason. Basically to get ready to, um, uh, just to get ready for next season because we're definitely going to need him. He, he's one of our best offensive linemen, been the most consistent out there. Um, so, you know, with him and Frederick um, and Tyron Smith, we need all hands on deck for next year. And um, we're probably going to have to hire some um, – higher um to sign some backups and stuff like that because we might lose some of the guys that we had before now um and of course you know ezekiel elliott and um um and uh byron jones you know everybody not byron jones i'm sorry ezekiel elliott and um amari cooper um <clears throat> and there was a picture out there of of amari cooper uh jalen smith um, cause he, he made the pro bowl, um, because, uh, another linebacker backed out. So, um, shout out to him for getting to his first pro bowl. That's huge for him. Um, Mr. Swipe. Um, so the picture that he took with, <clears throat> with Tyron and, um, and, uh, Travis Frederick is hilarious because Amari's face, he's just sitting there and there's a bunch of memes and different people doing different captions and saying different funny things. Like, you know, he, he's the, uh, red headed stepchild in the picture, or he, he's that one sibling that didn't get his way or whatever. I, they done said so many different things. Now, you know, a lot of people, uh, talk about Amari Cooper and the way that he, and I'm not gonna get too much into this because this wasn't, wasn't what the video was about, but you know, I could ramble sometimes, but I just want to say that real quick. Like, um, you know, Amari Cooper has one of those faces where like, it just looks like he's not having fun. That's not always the case. That's just the way he is. He has a resting, what they call, and I hate to use this word, but he has a resting bitch face. And I hate to say that word, excuse me for saying that, but that's the only way I can explain it. He's just got a resting, that's, that's his face. That's just the way he looks. And it just looks like he's not having any fun. But I mean, that's just the way he is. He's not like, he's not like your normal diva wide receiver where they're just over the top all the time and talking to everybody. He's actually really an introvert. He, he doesn't really like talking to media, but because he has to, because that's in all players contracts, they have to talk to media members. Um, that's just, that's just the way to land when it comes to that. So, um, you kind of just got to just roll with the punches now um so don't take that for his character being messed up it's just that's just the way he is you have to excuse that now to the topic at hand we all talk about mike mccarthy and ever since he came here him making this so-called all-star um coaching staff that we have now that's remained to be seen at this point but they call it an all-star staff because a lot of the guys that he signed under him um, have years of experience in this league. And I mean, these guys, you know, at least a decade, you know, for different perspectives and different teams that they've been on and multiple teams that they've been a part of, including uh, 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 Skip Pete. So um, some of these guys worked under Mike McCarthy, some of the guys he just knew. Um, he wanted some um, to guys that he was familiar with on his staff, which makes sense. Now, we, we all know that uh, Kellen Moore and Doug Nussmeyer are the only carryovers from the Garrett era. And it just seems like, shoot, within a month, if that, it's like this whole team has turned over as far as the coaching staff goes. And, you know, who knows what's going to happen with these players. But I did want to talk about another hire that we got, George Edwards. Um, if you don't know him, he's the former defensive coordinator for the Vikings. He was the defensive coordinator for the Minnesota Vikings throughout Mike Zimmer, which is their coach, throughout his whole tenure. And you know that Mike Zimmer used to be the offensive coordinator here back in the day in Dallas. Um, so it's a lot of um, um, familiar guys around here. So um, with George Edwards joining the staff, I think that's a really good hire. I really like that one. Um, I like like his work and some of the things that he's done. So he was a defensive coordinator uh, for the Vikings, but for the Dallas Cowboys, he is going to work with the linebackers with uh, McClurry. So we have McClurry and we have him. And I think that he actually, I think that George Edwards might actually be our new linebackers coach and McClurry is going to be his assistant. 
And apparently he's also going to have a bigger role than that. They're going to use him in other facets of the of the defense as well. But I think that he's going to be pivotal in the maturation of both Jalen Smith and um, Leighton Vander Esch. So um, I really like that hire. Now, you know, some people may question it a little bit because he was ousted. Um, he was fired because, uh, you know, their defense got pummeled by the – the, the San Francisco 49ers, but sometimes you have to give credit to the other team that you're playing against that they just beat you sometimes. I mean, I don't care how good of a coach you are. You're going to, you're going to lose. You're going to lose sometimes. You're not going to win every game. Um, it, that's, 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 that's almost saying like you're a robot that you're perfect. You know, you're the coach, but your players got to play as well. Um, execution comes um, through that. So you can't just sit here and, you know, do whatever when it comes to that. So, um, I just, I just feel like you have to, when, when you're getting a coaching staff and I'm really excited about a lot of these hires. Now I'm, the verdict is still out on Mike Nolan. I don't, I, you know, it could be great. I'm seeing what they're trying to do with this defense and they're almost look like they're going with a hybrid system and basically a four, three front, but they're changing up the schemes in the back end. So it's almost like they're Frankensteining. So those of you that are in the cars like me, you know how, like when you have, um, say if you're doing an engine swap on your car and you got a block from one car and then you have the heads of like your heads, the top of the engine is from a different car and you basically have them together, but they retrofit. So that's what they call Frankensteining. So I feel like that's what they're doing with this defense. They're Frankensteining this defense and they're doing different things to try to um, make themselves less predictable. Guys, Less predictability is, is what we've been talking about for the longest time now. And 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 this is what we need on this team. We need to be less <laughs> predictable and and being able to confuse offenses. And um, I want to do some things that I've never seen the Dallas Cowboys do on defense and like the Patriots do, where they line up in one formation and then once the ball snaps, they switch to a whole different formation. It's like, you don't even know what they're about to do. They're about to come after you. And I'm just loving some things with that. So I'm really liking the hire of George Edwards. Um, I'm going to look more into the staff now that it's pretty much complete now. I think it is. Um, they might be hiring some more assistants here and there. But the gist of the staff is complete. Um, the, they didn't go to the senior bowl because this coaching staff needs to be able to gel with each other. They need to all get together and go over this staff as far as not the staff, but this, this these players and to see who they're going to keep in free agency, who they're going to get rid of. Um, it starts with Dak. Um, it continues with Amari Cooper and it continues with Byron Jones. Um, to see if they're going to keep Byron Jones, if they're going to let him walk. There's been speculation that um, there's other teams aggressively trying to get him, like the Eagles or whatever. But I look at it like this. I want all three of those guys here. And let me tell you guys, we talk about money. If they play their cards right, they can get all three of these guys signed up. They can do it. It's not an issue. They can get all three of these guys. And another thing is, too, um, they got money. They got over $90 million in cap space right now. Now, depending on what you do with guys like Tyrone Crawford, now Tyrone, he can either um, restructure his contract so he can take less money, which I think that he might do that, or you could cut him all the way and get, I think, like 7 or $8 million back. So that's an option there. So you can do some things with some of these contracts. If you play your cards right, um, we're pretty good with cap money. Um, whoever's on the books um, is an accountant, obviously, because I'm not an accountant. I'm not good with, with, with money and numbers like that. So when it comes to stuff like that, you know, I, I, I let the professionals deal with that. But I do understand how it works, though, um, the business side of football. And that's another thing that a, a lot of fans need to understand, too, that this business side of football plays in a lot with the decisions that these teams make. Now, as far as players go, Robert Quinn did say he wanted to come back. And Jerry Jones did say he wanted to do whatever it took to keep Quinn. 
So I think that Quinn is pretty much a guy that they're going to get back. So he's he's a top priority as well on this defense outside of Byron Jones. Well, we see what they do with Byron, but I think that they they like Quinn even better. So we'll see what happens. Um, let me know what you guys think about um George Edwards. Um, and uh, let's go from there and see see what happens. Now, um, yeah, I don't know if you guys are going to watch the Pro Bowl this weekend. I'm I'm gonna check it out a little bit, a little bit, see what they do. I think I. Missed some of the skills competition, but I'm gonna go back. I think I, I did think I DVR it. I can go back and look at it. But um, I, I, I like football in any capacity. Oh yeah, XFL is opening up soon. Um, the first game for the Washington team since I live in the DMV. Uh, I'm gonna go watch. I'm gonna go actually to the game with with Mark uh, when he gets back from Miami. Um, so we're gonna check that out and we're gonna get some coverage on that. Um, in the meantime. I know you guys are going to watch Mark's stuff. I know he's doing a lot of things in Miami right now. So getting some good footage for you guys and things of that nature. So shout out to him for that. But um, that's all I got. Uh, thanks again to all my subscribers. I appreciate you guys. If you're new to the channel, go on ahead and hit that subscribe button. Tap that notification bell to get this content from your boy, E2Blue. Always keeping it real.